Hello, welcome back to the Studio channel. Last week, we talked about what you need to know when buying coffee. Briefly in that video, we touched on the labels of coffee bags. And then this week, I'm just gonna go through a little bit more and give you a bit more information about understanding the bag. The first thing that we're looking at when we see the bags are, in general, the name of the producer or the estate where the coffee is grown. Most of the bags or the coffees that you will buy will have a name and that name or title will reflect the production or the farm. Kibingu from Burundi. Ta -da! So next, is the country of origin. So coffee is grown in the coffee belt, right? So the area, the, the tropics of Capricorn and Cancer, which surround the equator. Coffee grows in this region around the planet. We are talking Africa. We are talking Central Africa, Ethiopia, Burundi, Rwanda, Kenya, this kind of region. We're talking South and Central America and we are talking Southeast Asia. So in these areas around the planet is where coffee is grown. Each of these countries have their own specific flavor profiles. So in general, African coffees are known to be more fruity, more citrus, more acidic, bright, complex. Then we're talking about uh, Southeast Asia. So like in general, the flavors are a bit more earthy. They can be, in my, from my experience, a little more green and a little more vegetal sometimes. They have some interesting coffee processing practices, like for example, anyway, we'll get there, but they have different ways to process the fruit. For example, wet hulled, which I'll try and remember to talk about after, which will leave some more grassy kind of green notes on the coffee. Then we head to Central and South America. So we're talking Brazil, Colombia, Mexico. So these types of countries are usually generally flavor profiles, very chocolatey, quite full bodied. First things first, so this, these are massive generalizations. I will continue to break this down shortly. So when it comes to understanding our coffee bags, there are a number of things that we need to be aware of. Firstly, country of origin. Secondly, region of origin, because every region will have its own general flavor profiles. Then the processing of the coffee. So whether the coffee is washed or natural, we'll go into that soon. The altitude of a coffee, the producer. So some producers can be quite famous and they'll be relatively known for certain types of coffees. Also, where are we? Yeah, the variety, so the type of coffee tree. On these bags, that's about it. Different roasters will share different information. So there are also different levels of traceability and transparency. Some companies show the price of which they paid per pound or per kilo of the coffee. So I think in general, off the top of my head, that's about, that's about what you can expect. Country, region, processing of the fruit, in which general method, altitude, variety of tree, name of the producer or a state in which the coffee has been grown and or processed depending on the country every country has different rules for how the coffee will be like how traceable it is so with all those in mind every single coffee is different fun fact also every single harvest is different every single year like coffee is a fresh product usually from the time of harvest you will in theory generally not be drinking coffee that was harvested the year before so usually it'll be harvested it'll take a month or two before it's fully processed to arrive to us, which will then be roasted and hopefully finished within maybe nine months maximum from the time of harvest. This is again, general. So coffee is a fresh product. Every single harvest is different. Every single year will be different. So the first thing I look for in order to understand the coffee bags is country of origin. If I'm going Latin America or Asia, I know that in general, it's gonna be a little bit more um, heavy, more chocolatey in general. Or I go to my personal favorites are the African coffees, which are known to be a little bit more acidic, a bit more fruity. So first country of origin from there, I would then check the flavor notes because on each of the bags, you will also see that there are flavor profiles. Some will say they're like blueberry, lemon, cheesecake, and then others will say chocolate, um, vegetal, maybe a bit herby. So like on the bag, it will give you the general kind of idea. So. Then I would go to what I expect from each country of origin and then the region of the country, which you can Google if you're not sure, just look it up. So country of origin, Africans, more fruity, uh, Latin Americans and the Asian coffee is a little bit more chocolatey. Then I would move to yeah flavor notes just to see, okay, is it, what is it what's expected or is this gonna be something funky and different? The next thing that I would check out, which would directly kind of touch on the last point of if it's gonna be normal, 
for the country or different would be the processing. So if you if you go to a coffee shop, you look at their bags, they will have certain processing methods written on them. The most common that you'll find are washed or wet processed, semi-washed, semi-natural and natural, and then a bunch of other fancy terms like carbonic maceration or cold fermentation. So these four, these four are the main things that I would be looking for. Wet or washed process will give you a cleaner cup. This is where we'll go, like in the future, we'll go a lot more into detail about the specific processes because I don't think it makes much sense to go into it now when I can't show you pictures of a farm or I don't have it here with me. But so washed or wet process removes the fruit from the seed and then the seed is dried without any fruit. Natural process, so remember there's four, so washed or wet, they remove the fruit, fruit is dried, a seed is dried without the fruit. Natural process, they keep the fruit intact, skin and mucilage slash flesh, so it's skin and mucilage intact while the fruit is dried. So it looks like the whole fruit or cherry is picked and it's dried just like that. So a washed coffee will taste in general a little brighter and a little cleaner in the cup. Natural coffees I find have a bit more of a rounded acidity and the seed itself has sometimes fermented a little so it will have a slight touch of overripe fruit and or the acidity is a bit more muted. It's a bit fuller and rounder in the mouth. It still be, can still be be acidic but the acidity is different here it's brighter cleaner and tastes a little more complex the natural it can be a bit more muted and round and juicy and sometimes a little bit like overripe fruit i love them both this is a massive generalization and it's how i personally choose coffee country of origin flavor notes processing methods so that i understand more or less what to expect look at the flavor notes they will tell you about like how wild the aromas are if you see bubble gum and like cherries then you know it's pretty funky that's processing method again top country of origin region flavor notes in general which will either come from the farm themselves or from the roasters uh, every roastery will be different in how they categorize and how they taste or state their preference ideally the notes themselves will come directly from the roasters so Country of origin, region, flavor notes, tasting notes, washed, wet, natural, processing method, right? So again, country of origin, region, tasting notes, processing method. Altitude is another thing you'll see on the bags. So the altitude is how high above sea level, so how high or how low the, the plantation sits. You can often sometimes see a range, like 1,400 meters to 2,100, then you know that it's like a giant farm that's very steep. So, or you can just see 2,100 meters above sea level, like, which would be high, like a high altitude coffee. The higher the altitude in general, the longer it will take for the fruit to ripen, which means that the coffee will have a higher density. Higher altitude has a higher density and a higher complexity. And then when you get lower, then you're thinking more like earthy tones, chocolatey, big heavy. So there are two more, two more aspects of the bag to look at. First is the variety of coffee tree. There are, there are a lot of coffee tree varieties, forgive me, goodness gracious me, varieties that, that are commercially grown, commercially produced. They all have different characteristics of flavor. Some are more tasty than others, and then others are more, for example, disease or insect resistant, and then others will provide a higher yield. So, so basically every single Every single variety has its own different has its own unique characteristics, just like wines, and also especially for us as consumers in the mouth, like what we feel is different with different varieties. So I also keep an eye out for that. There are a couple famous varieties that are known for incredibly complex and delicious coffees, such as geisha or sidra. And then like red bourbon. There's just so much to talk about here, guys. It's too much. Forgive me if I ramble, eh? Like, I do my best. Mwah. Yeah, so that's varieties. And then the last aspect of the bag that I would look for is, of course, and very important one, is the roasting profile. So usually shops will offer a different roast for espresso filter coffee. So mostly the difference, I touched on it briefly in the last video and I'll just briefly recap here. Coffee roasted for espresso, because we have such a small amount of time to extract a decent flavor, the coffee needs to be uh, less dense, like a bit more brittle and easier to more soluble. So a darker roast allows for that. 
a lighter roast, we have a little bit more time to extract the ideal balance of flavors. So that will be your filter roasts. So usually if you're using filter at home, I would suggest getting a filter roast coffee. And if you're using espresso, get an espresso roast. But if people tell me that they like very, not very, if they like more bitter coffees, even if they're using filter, I would still potentially suggest that they grab an espresso roast. So it just, it depends on what you like. Yeah, so I think hopefully that's enough information <laughs> for you to kind of like have a little have a better understanding of what you're looking for with the coffee bags so just to just to try and recap everything firstly choose your country of origin based on the, the general flavors that you like remember i'm not even going to say just chocolatey like chocolatey more heavy latin america and uh, southeast asia more fruity bright complex africa and then from there Check out, the, check out the tasting notes, check out the variety, the altitude, the region, the processing method. I hope this has helped clarify coffee bags for you. If you have any further questions, please leave them below and we'll do our best to answer those and or potentially create another video if we need to. Next week, join us because we will be talking about a comparison between specialty coffee and a more traditional European just traditional coffee cultures in general. I, I think it's an important thing to touch on just to highlight the kind of differences between the two worlds, like both brilliant in their own ways. Um, cool, thank you for joining us. It's been an absolute pleasure and have a lovely day. Bye.